Hey what's up guys, now the entire scene was shot using an iPhone 12 Pro Max handheld with no stabilization and no post stabilization done in Premiere Pro. So let me explain why this phone could possibly replace my HDSLR when it comes to vlogging. Now let's talk about Apple's HDR or more often than not, let's talk about Dolby Vision which is an incredible software built in that detects automatically highlights and try to capture back the image and the data from the highlights while protecting the shadows. Why does images look so well in Hollywood is because the camera from the cinema lines often have high dynamic range. They are able to capture the blacks of the blacks and the highlights of the brightness. They're for giving you a really high dynamic range. An iPhone 12 is not alien to this. An iPhone 12 sports the new Dolby Vision feature that makes image look so professional just straight out of camera without any post editing being done. If I were to take this on a DSLR, I would have to crunch in the highlights to make it zero and then I would have to boost the blacks just to raise up the shadows. So this is a lot of work being done in post to make a DSLR look straight out of camera from what an iPhone does. And this is why I think iPhone has a huge market to target consumers. Not prosumers, but basically consumers. And the next reason why I like the iPhone 12 Pro series is because it has three lenses. Now prior to this, I was using an iPhone 6S, a single lens camera. Now back then when they had a single lens camera, it only seems like a norm. But when companies started pushing out three lenses, two lenses, even four lenses, people started making jokes about them, but actually they have so much functionality behind having three lenses and let me explain why. Having a DSLR, I constantly find the need to change lenses to tell a different side of story based on the angle and the image that it projects. So for instance, this is a Canon wide angle lens. Now this lens costs easily 8,399 ringgit on retail and this is Canon's 85mm tight lens. Now this lens costs about 1,000 ringgit 99 and totaling up you're looking at about a 9 to 10,000 ringgit investment on glass that you're gonna have to swap constantly when you're traveling or taking videos. Plus, needless to say, the weight on them is very substantial. You're gonna have to come across a really strong arm in the end of the day because the fact that the weight plus the DSLR itself is just so goddamn heavy. Forwarding to 2020, we have an ability to mitigate all of these issues with just holding a handheld pocket iPhone. That's insane! You're gonna have to have three lenses in here that doesn't need any swapping at all from what a DSLR will need to do plus the fact that you can capture it straight out of pocket and it looks pretty dang good. Alright then, now here comes the part that you guys want to hear the most. Resolution. 1080p at 24 frames, 30 frames, 60 frames, 120 frames and even up to 240 frames per second which means that you can capture really slow motion videos. Now in 4K world, we have 4K24, 4K30 and 4K60. The 4K60 is easily becoming one of my favorite features is because I lack this 4K feature in my DSLR. And my DSLR body is not cheap. We're talking about a 60 Mark II that cost 8,399 on the day it was released in 2017 and it does not even support 4K. It shoots at 1080p which looks like 720p and even the 1080p on the phone looks so much better because let's face it, it's 2020 now. And here's to the next point, sensor shift stabilization. You know what separates out from a really bad videographer versus a really pro videographer? Really amateur footages, just like really shaky footages. Now when the iPhone 6 first came out, they do not have any form of stabilization. Hence, you're gonna need to buy an Osmo for mobile or you're gonna have to like rig it up just like what I did here when I was entering for a competition. So while I must say I've actually invested thousands into systems that stabilize footage, I can vouch for the fact that it does not still look professional because of the micro jitter that it causes. Example like this, when I shot at Barumang, you can see that there 
was footage just shaking all around and that's not because of the fact that you know my hands are not stable perhaps the DJI Ronin SC is just not that good of a stabilization system after all and I paid a thousand ringgit 150 for that product however for this new iPhone 12 Pro Max it is actually sporting a brand new system called sensor shift which basically has the sensor within the phone that shifts along with the motion of your movements so with this in mind the image just looks so much more cleaner so much more professional and you can save yourself a thousand ringgit without needing to buy a DJI system and all of the shots that I shot in Sunway were all handheld plus it was raining so heavily it was slippery all around you can only imagine the amount of stabilization that needs to perform on the camera to produce an image like this it's incredible I must say this is by far one of the best stabilization system I've ever used on a smartphone. Now this even beat the S20 Ultra at some cases. Now since we are on the topic about Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra flagship model in 2020, I'm going to be comparing it to the iPhone 12 Pro Max, a flagship from Apple in 2020, side by side in the next video. So stay tuned for that and uh, subscribe if you haven't already and please do a like and comment if you want to see more of this content. Right, so let's move on to the next. Pro. And the next pro is the auto white balance. The auto white balance of this is just phenomenal. Notice this footage when I was in this fitting room. It just looks so white and clean. And I must say there's a lot of mixed lighting. The lighting that comes out from the panel is yellow, while the lighting from the top is white. But consistently, as I were to turn off and on the phone, as I were to do these transitions, it seems as though it gets the correct white balance or close to the correct white balance almost all of the time. And lastly, the low light performance. The low light performance of the iPhone 12 Pro Max series just flores it in all of the camera systems that I've seen on smartphones. The S20 Ultra cannot even compare to the amount of detail and shadows and highlights at the same time that you can recover from images like these. Needless to say, a phone as perfect as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, there are a lot of shortcomings that come along with it. So let me explain on what I think that are the shortcomings for the iPhone 12 Pro Max series. The first is, it heats up at 4K 60 frames per second. Now, it is no stranger that it would heat up at such a high amount of you know, data that's coming into the phone as in some DSLRs or some mirrorless cameras from Canon do actually heat up as well. However, I've noticed that the frames on the phone do freeze up from time to time when you're recording at 4K 60 frames per second. And I thought that I did not manage to get a good angle. thought that, you know, the stabilization had some errors and I'm going to get a really crappy image. I've noticed that there are instances in real life when I'm looking through down to the screen that the frames just, you know, it just jumps between takes and the next thing is, let's talk about this stabilization. While the sensor shift stabilization is awesome for pushing and push out movements, it does have its drawback when you're doing parallaxing. Just like any form of stabilization, there's always a drawback. So when you're doing a parallax motion, you're gonna be moving from left to right. Plus, with the motion of you moving left to right, you're gonna introduce up and down jitters, which the sensor needs to correct. So coming from the fact that you're shooting from left to right, plus to the fact that you are shaking up and down, your image is gonna be jitter, just like this. Now the lens that I most often use, even on my DSLR, and the same goes for this phone, is the super wide angle. The super wide angle is at 13 millimeters, and I just love this thing coupled with the sensor shift stabilization. However, I must say that the super wide angle has its weakest point in terms of clean image. Most of the image just seems muddy, soft, when you actually zoom in onto the size. Now that's to be expected because wide angle lenses are in fact the hardest to manufacture. Now even a manufacturer such as Canon, now this is the Mark II series of the 2.8 16-35mm, you're going to be coming across short-handed as well. First thing, it does not have digital IS. And the second, this lens is known to be pretty soft, even on photos. And the chromatic abbreviation is so obvious on a wide angle lens like this. Now there are times when I shoot 1080p at a wide angle lens like this, I often find myself, why does that image look like 720p and in some cases 480p? Well, that's because of the nature of the wide angle lens. There's just not a lot of details that's being shot as the lens curves to give you that wide angle feature. So it is to be expected that the iPhone 12 Pro Max series does not fare as well as compared to a telephoto lens. And since we're on the topic of chromatic aberration, let's talk about lens flares. So the lens flares on this iPhone is not the best. 
for some reason when I was shooting it when it was on a downpour I think that rain or moisture has been condensating onto the lens of the iPhone 12 Pro Max thus causing a lot of these ghosting effects so I'm personally not a big fan of this and even on this sequence when I were to just push in to in front of the Sunway Pyramid lion head you can see that there are a lot of water droplets that just does not look natural at all when light bounces right off of it. And also, if you're using iPhone system for the longest of time, you've also come across a frustrating point where you are unable to capture video manually. Now, this is the same for the iPhone 12 Pro Max series. And I personally don't like it because you cannot set the ISO or the exposure values at a constant value without it ever changing. So for instance, on this scene, I want to capture the cleanest of picture that I have in my head, but I'm unable to because of the fact that the ISO changes from the environment. Now, I have tried all my ways and resources to get around this without paying an app, a third-party app, to download into the phone to measure in all the ISO the apertures and the exposures and all that. So what I did, auto locked the auto exposure and the auto focus into a single point and then I whipped the camera into this part and that's when the image starts falling apart because whatever I, I locked focus on to that image does not exist in the new image hence causing the sensor to go havoc trying to recorrect the exposure value. So that's pretty much all the complaints that I have. Personally, I'm a big fan of the iPhone 12 Pro Max series and it will definitely replace my DSLR as I go to travel next time. Now down to my personal thoughts about the new iPhone 12 Pro Max. Now this is easily going to replace my DSLR as a workforce as I were to use it as a vlogging camera or a camera that tells a story in my life and I post it onto socials such as YouTube and Instagram and sometimes even onto Facebook. Okay, so we're gonna end this video with a couple of vlogs to show you how the iPhone 12 Pro Max stands out as a vlogging camera at night. Pretty much the front camera is pretty good. I don't see any, you know, noise or something like that. Not too blaring, of course. I have so much more content coming up from using this iPhone 12 Pro Max. So if you are really inclined to see those kind of content coming up from me, I really do appreciate it if you were to click the subscribe button, the like button, or if you would just comment on whichever part of the video that you think that is just outstanding and just blows your mind okay so with that in mind i hope that you do check out my instagram page and do support most of my work as because the support is much needed for me to continue on this series so thank you so much again for watching and as always i'll catch you in the next one